After a quiet full moon night in the Chihuahuan Desert, I woke up to another beautiful day in the Big Bend region of West Texas, hitched up my trailer, and headed back out onto the road for a quick stop in civilization before my drive into the backcountry. Terlingua was founded sometime in the 1880s when miners discovered mercury in the area. It eventually grew to a population of about 2,000 people, but then went into decline after the mining boom. Nowadays, it's a funky little town of hippies, artists, vagabonds, and random dogs. It's also one of the only places in the area to get gas and services. The Terlingua ghost town still features remnants of the community from more than 100 years ago. Mixed with a couple cafes, stores, and the Starlight Theater, a notable Big Ben eatery with live music. I stopped for a coffee and perused the local book section to find God's Middle Finger, pretty good book about the lawless community in the Sierra Madres down in Mexico. Now headed west out of Tulingua, Texas Highway FM 170 hugs the Rio Grande and runs about 114 miles from Studi Butte to the remote town of Candelaria. It's considered one of the most beautiful roads in Texas. Uh, I've driven the whole thing on a couple of occasions, but this trip I was a little bit short on time. It's a scenic road of steep passes, long stretches of desert, and very few cars and people. For much of the journey, you're just a stone's throw away from the Rio Grande and the Mexican border. And as if Big Bend National Park isn't remote enough, there's also Big Bend State Park, which has barely a single paved road. So I was fortunate enough to land a backcountry campsite back in Big Bend National Park. There's about 64 of these official campsites and backcountry roads. Some of these are, you know, they're, they're up to like a two-hour drive off the paved highway, which is just super remote. Uh, so I was able to grab the rice tank site, which is somewhere off of Glen Springs Road. Uh, looking like a pretty amazing day, so remote, and I'm just excited to get out here. This is a beautiful site. There is uh, there's no one for miles. I Actually, I take that back. I saw one guy at a site uh, on the way in. He's about two miles away. Aside from that, I don't see anything else. Plan is uh, just, to, just to chill out. Fortunately, I got the spot for two nights. It's only 10 bucks, so I lucked out. It was available tomorrow night, so... I think I'm going to wake up. I'm going to leave the trailer here uh, so that I can do some more off-road trails like Black Gap, go to the Mariscal Mine, and uh, I can come back and camp here tomorrow night or uh, hitch back up, take it with me, go somewhere else. We'll just see how it goes. But that's why I like traveling like that, and that is the adventure is just... Just never planning much, just winging it. Just having everything with you. So I have everything here. I've got a few days of food, water, a few days of beer, uh, some chips and salsa and all kinds of stuff. So I'm good. So I'm just going just gonna to play it by ear and don't know where I'm going to go. Somewhere out there. That's where I'm going to be. So I haven't bathed in like three days. That's just part of the adventure. Uh, especially when you're in the desert and you're traveling like this. So I got uh, two extra gallons of water and uh, some kind of crap dollar store body wash. I had that in the trail. I keep, I keep some toiletries, but, you know, water is scarce here. So I'm just going to strip down here butt naked in the middle of the desert and scrub myself. Really, there's no one to see. There's no one for for plenty of miles. Uh Maybe Border Patrol swings by or maybe some kind of Border Patrol aerial thing spots me. Um, it is what it is. All right, so I got my shower in. I uh, Pretty clean now. As clean as I'm going to get out here in this kind of environment. Uh, I used one gallon with a little bit left over. That's not bad at all. Uh the aftermath that's it so that's really not bad because uh when you're out here in these 
adventures like this, you got to conserve water. I mean, I can't be bringing like 50 gallons. I need water for <laughs> drinking and cooking and survival, but, uh, you know, I can't be taking like deluxe showers out here. But one of my plans is to eventually put a water tank on the trailer. I'm thinking I can put something down below underneath the carriage. I've got 24 inches of ground clearance. It's actually more than I even need. So even if I had, even if I lost a little bit of ground clearance, if I had a little tank on there, that could hold maybe 20 gallons of water, hook up a, um, a low, low wattage pump that would enable me to, to pump water. It would make life in these uh, adventures a lot better because just to have a shower and get clean, uh, it, I don't know, makes you feel so much better. kind of recharges your batteries to, to camp and uh, boondock and do more primitive camping just to get that shower in. So, these desert nights, uh, just amazing. Sun setting out there. Got some uh, dinner going, which uh, you guessed it, more tacos, fajitas and beer. Pick up some, uh, some local grass-fed ground beef. Uh, cut everything up before. Onions, tomatoes, some cheese and lime. Uh, you gotta work with what you got out here. So all they had was this hot taco mix. Got the salsa verde again. Uh, some giant dos equis. So that's what's on the menu for tonight. I never quite worry about animals in the wilderness, but I do people. Uh, and I hear somebody driving out there. Could be another camper going to their campsite. Most likely what it is. Or a ranger. But, there they go. Somebody coming up the road. Two of them. Three. Yeah, four. It's definitely some Jeepers. Some Overlanders, a whole convoy. Five. Got dinner made. Uh, my rigged up tacos that I had. Not so bad. Got the big ass Dos Equis beer. Got some more taco meat up there. Uh, like I said, I try to keep the meals simple in these adventures. At home, I usually eat vegetables and a little bit more variety. But out here, I can't play fancy kitchen chef. I know some people do, some overlanders have these elaborate setups, but I just want to keep it simple. All right, it is uh, <laughs> dead quiet out here. It's pitch dark too, which uh, the moon, it's a full moon, so it's been coming out the past couple nights, which makes it super bright. So I'm thinking the moon is coming out. It's just we're surrounded by more mountains, so it's not high in the sky yet. But uh, I think I'm going to go for a little night ride, see what's going on. And uh, maybe spot some javelinas. We 
got a little bit more of this road to get back to camp and I can actually see my trailer. It's that little light. It's just crazy. It's so far away. It's the only light for miles. And uh, moon's coming up. All right, so I uh, took a ride. Probably drove like three miles down the road. Came back. Didn't see any javelinas, anything. Saw mites. Might see something, but uh, the moon's coming out, and uh, it's it's getting very cold up here. It didn't occur to me I was forgetting we're probably at a uh, much higher elevation than we were in Terlingua, so it's probably going to be a colder night. So probably just going to hang out a little bit longer, then get in the trailer and start warming up in there.